Hello everyone, this is DA from EA Get Me, and this video is about one of the method or technique that we will be using in a strong form in the finite element method course. So let's start. In the last video, we have seen what are the four main methods in the strong form. So this petrov gulerkin is one of those four methods that we will be using in the strong form. Um, because these four methods are the type of the weighted residual method that we have discussed these kind of things in our previous video. So, so if you haven't watched the FEM playlist yet, so the link will be in the description of this video. Go and learn uh, the finite element method basics and all. So today our main target is petrov galerkin method. Uh, it is the type of the weighted residual method as I have told you earlier and in the previous video as well. The main thing that we need to hold on uh, is the assumption of this method. And the assumption is the shape functions are not equal to the weight function. And this is the main assumption of this strong form that is the petrov galerkin method. Let's solve an example related to the petrov galerkin method and we will see how we can assume these things while solving a differential equation with the help of the strong form or more specifically petrov galerkin method so here we are with the differential equation that minus d square u by dx square minus u plus x square where u is the function of x we know that the displacement we're using it again and again in our equations so the boundary conditions here are that u at zero is equal to zero so the bar is fixed from one end and the derivative of the displacement function at the other end that is one is equal to one which means that the domain is from zero to one and the displacement function that is the exact primary variable is small u so this is the complete problem here we have a differential equation we have a set of boundary conditions now the thing that we have discussed in the previous video about uh, the selection of the weight or the shape function in the strong form or the weighted residual methods is is that there, there are a few things that we need to remember because we have talked about the condition on phi j and phi naught that are the shape, shape functions we have and we have talked about that on phi naught the boundary condition would be in the actual form and in phi j, the boundary condition would be in the homogeneous form. So if we have the given boundary condition like this, so what would be the condition on phi naught at zero? Because we have seen that the actual form, so phi naught at zero, that is zero. So this is the actual thing. And phi naught, the derivative of phi naught at one is equal to one. That is the actual one. And phi j, we have to satisfy the boundary conditions in the homogeneous form of the phi j. So phi j at zero is equal to zero. So does the phi j, the derivative at one is equal to zero. So this is the homogeneous form of the phi j and this is the actual form um, of phi naught of the boundary conditions. So this is the condition on how we are going to select the shear functions in this petrov galerkin method. So this is just the recall of the things that we have discussed in the previous videos. And this will help us to decide the structure of phi node and phi j and so uh, the weight function as well. Because we have the assumption that phi j is not equal to the shape function is not equal to the weight function. So the first step in the solution of this differential equation with respect to the petrov galerkin method uh, is that the residual. We know the definition of residual that is left hand side minus right hand side and this is the differential we have. So here we are with d square capital U by dx square. Why I'm writing capital U here because capital U is the approximate function of the exact differential uh, displacement function. So minus capital U plus x square and the right hand side is equal to zero so there is no need to write it. And here we need to write the definition of capital U. We know what is the definition of capital U. That is equal to summation Cj phi j plus phi naught as we have seen in our 
previous videos from day one uh, where j is one to n the number of nodes that we have in our system so let's plug this u in here so we will be having where we are minus d square by dx of u that is u from here and then minus u that is u here plus x square so this is our residual here because the strong form petrov galerkian method is the type of the weighted residual method and we know the structure of the weighted residual that is of the form integral w i into the residual and over the that depends on this over the whole domain and that is equal to zero so this is the weighted integral statement now we have the residual here and that is the residual we have to plug this r into this weighted integral residual so we will be having this statement now so the integral would be like this the weight function this whole the residual dx is equal to zero here the domain is from zero to one as given in the boundary condition so now what would be the next step that would be the construction of the shape functions and the weight function phi j phi naught and wi because it depends on what type of nodes we have what type of nodes or how many type of nodes we are because we are in the linear situation that is in the that is very basic situation so the basic or by default condition is of linearity that we have a linear system so the other thing is that how many nodes we are dealing with so in the previous example i have uh took j is equal to one only one node or two ends so for example let's suppose we have j is equal to two which means that we have two nodes and we have to specify phi one phi two and phi node and two uh weight function as well w1 and w2 what would be the structure of phi1 phi2 phi node uh would be in the boundary conditions that we have seen that phi naught at zero is equal to zero and phi naught the derivative at one is equal to one so does uh, this phi j so these things will determine and in the previous video we have talked about the selection of phi phi j phi naught and omega as well so by checking these all conditions we will be in a situation to give some sort of structure to phi naught phi j w1 and w2 so i'm just writing here the shape functions phi j and phi naught that it would be uh, the most simplest phi naught and phi j in this case but i'm not saying that uh, the proposed phi naught and phi j would be unique because this is not a simple or unique method i am assuming some structure of phi naught and phi j in this problem and there is no guarantee that other person uh, wouldn't come up with uh, something different so there's always a possibility of different phi naught and phi j unless and until they satisfy the properties that we have discussed in the previous videos so by assuming all of these properties uh, i'm assuming the properties here but this is your task to check uh, whether phi naught and phi j in this problem uh, satisfy the conditions that we have discussed in the previous videos so so let's assume here by this uh, that phi naught is equal to x phi 1 is equal to some x2 minus x and uh, phi 2 is equal to x square 1 minus um, 2 by 3 and x so this is uh, the structure of phi naught phi 1 and phi 2 it is your task to check these three shape functions satisfy the boundary conditions the given boundary conditions that we have as well as the restrictions on the shape functions of the strong form as well so this is the structure phi naught is equal to x phi 1 is x into 2 minus x and phi 2 is x square into 1 minus 2 by 3 x the task here is to plug these values in this thing because i have picked j is equal to 2 nodes 2 so we have to pick um j 
and phi j we have to substitute j phi j phi naught in this uh, equation in this equation now the point is that we have we have talked about phi 1 phi 2 and phi naught so what about w1 and w2 the weight functions the two weight functions that we are going to write in this uh, integral the point is the previous video uh, that is about the situation or the conditions of the weight function or the shear function so we have to assume the same conditions on the weight functions as well okay this is the vagueness of this technique because there is no uh, certain rule for the weight function because we are assuming that the shape function and weight function in this system are not same but when we are here to specify what would be the w1 and w2 so the condition in w1 and w2 are same as on the shape functions so we are assuming w1 and w2 in this point let's assume w1 is equal to the simplest polynomial x and w2 is equal to x square so we have w1 and w2 we have phi naught phi 1 and phi 2 now here you need to check uh, the conditions on w1 w2 phi naught phi 1 and phi 2 whether these five functions that we have wrote here satisfy the conditions that we have talked in the previous video why uh, why i'm stressing on this situation because it, this is not just a vague polynomial there is a complete system behind these w1 w2 and phi naught phi 1 phi 2 uh, and this is the point where the system or where this technique is quite vague because if a person is solving some problem problem related to the petrov galerkin method so it will consume a lot of time and effort to find out what would be the shape or the weight functions because there are a lot of restrictions on these kind of functions and in the upcoming video we will see how we can overcome these kind of issues somehow uh, but now we have to deal with uh, the situation now the point is we have now two integrals the two integral would be w1 the same derivative of c1 phi 1 plus c2 phi 2 plus phi naught minus the same thing here plus x square and that dx the integral is equal to zero and the other thing is the integral 0 to 1 w2 same thing here same thing here plus x square and dx is equal to so we have two integral here the two integral here which means that we have two uh if we solve this thing we will be having two system of equations okay so let's solve this thing one more point is that uh if we plug all of the weight and shape function in the one integral so it would be difficult to solve the whole integral at once so the tip here is that we need to plug the values of cj and phi j in the residual so here we are with the residual this is the residual right this whole thing so we have to plug for example r is equal to minus d square by dx square that is the second derivative so here we are with c1 phi 1 plus c2 phi 2 plus phi naught and the minus of this whole thing c1 phi 1 plus um, c2 phi 2 plus phi naught plus x square so phi 1 is uh, x 2 minus x c1 x 2 minus x c2 x2 is x square um, 1 minus 2 by 3x plus phi naught is x. So we have to take the derivative because c1 and c2 here are the c1, c2 are the two constants. So we'll take the derivative. So after plugging these values, we will be having an equation uh, like uh, this c1, 2, x minus x square plus c2. So you will have to check after solving this thing that this will be after taking the derivative and solving taking c1 and c2 common from this thing and plus x and x square so this would be the equation after plugging c1 and c2 
of the residual. So this is the simplest or uh, the solution of the residual after plugging phi naught, phi one, and phi two, and taking the derivative, of course. So this are this is the residual, and we have to plug w one that is x and this whole thing plus x square in the residual part, taking the derivative and then taking the integral, okay? Same case, w2, that is x squared, this whole thing on the domain of 0 to 1, taking the integral, and that is equal to 0. So after this thing, we will be having a, a system of linear equation with two equation, right? So the two equation would be of the form. So that would be the first equation. And the second equation would be this. So here we have two equation with two unknowns, C2 and C1. And we know how to solve this kind of system, right? Uh, so the solution would be of C1 is equal to 103 by 682. And C2 would be minus 15 by 682. So that is the solution of C1 and C2 after solving the system. Now C1 and C2 are there. What we are going to do, we know that we have approximated our differential equation from this capital U. And we have decided that J1 is equal to 1, 2, 2. So that would be equal to C1 phi 1 plus C2 phi 2 plus phi naught. We have C1 and C2. We know phi 1, phi 2 and phi naught that we have assumed. So we need to plug C1 and C2. Here, so that would become, so that would become capital U is equal to C1, that is 103682 times phi, C1 times phi1 and plus C2 times phi2, that is x square 1 minus 2 by 3x plus phi naught plus x, that is phi naught. So we need to solve this in order to get the more uh, simplest or the compact form uh, of this. So this is the answer of this problem. So this is how we can solve any differential equation with given boundary condition or with the help of petrov galerikin method. We have used three main things. The main thing is the assumption, phi naught, uh, that shear function is not equal to the weight function. The next thing we are using in this problem is the residual definition, the integral, the weighted integral uh, statement or the definition. This is how we can solve any problem related to the petrov galerkin method. Uh, that is the strong form, uh, the weighted. That is the strong method, the strong form. Why this is a strong form again? Because we haven't take uh, any integration by parts in the first step to weaken the differentiability. That is why it is a strong form. So in the next video, we will be dealing with the other method of the strong form to see what is the difference between a uh, petrov galerkin method and the other method and uh, how uh, we have there is a need to define a certain things in the future so this is for now you're looking for more such videos then you can subscribe this channel you know, to watch more upcoming videos we will meet in the next video till then take care goodbye